Welcome to the Charcoal Barbecue Kitchen, where everything is cooked with charcoal. Today I have bought some pork split side ribs, and I'm going to show you how to properly process this to get the maximum amount of delicious barbecue out of it. So when you open this up, you have a nice rectangular shape, but then this ugly breastbone thing that's folded underneath, either cut or attached still to the rectangular part. So I'm just trimming the rectangular part into a nice St. Louis cut and getting rid of all excess fat and dangling parts. And we're gonna make sure the thickness of all of the ribs here is not too uneven and not too thick either. If it's too thick, the fat doesn't render. So just trim it to a reasonable thickness that you think will uh, render the fat well. And of course, you're gonna collect all of those scraps and we're gonna make sausages out of the scraps in just a few minutes here. So I'm removing the membrane here, of course, with a butter knife. You don't wanna leave the membrane on. Now I'm gonna process this piece of cartilage that you really can't barbecue or smoke the best because it's just not the right shape. And I tried to barbecue this before, but it's just a mess not easy to eat and the fat doesn't render. It's just really, really an ugly piece of meat here. You could put it in a crock pot, but I think even with that, there's a lot of fat when you uh, slow cook ribs in a crock pot. So I really don't like crock potting ribs. This takes a lot of energy, a lot of time, but it's really enjoyable because you know that you're gonna get some beautiful, beautiful pork meat that you can grind up. And because I have a grinder, I know how to make this into uh, delicious ground pork. So you can see this piece of cartilage is just really, really ornery and hard to clean up. But uh, I've done my best here to scrape all the meat I can off of that. And now we've got the scraps. Make sure there's no hidden bones and then get a plastic bag and put it in there flat so that you can separate it after it's frozen. And you're gonna freeze it for five hours and then grind it in the LEM number 10 manual grinder. I highly recommend a manual one if you're gonna grind frozen meat. Here are some sausages, I've hand rolled them. I do not believe in using casings. I use a fennel paprika rub probably a couple of teaspoons of my rub to a pound of pork. I'm cooking a few sausages here with my homemade charcoal. These are kind of a mild Italian sausage with a fennel, paprika, garlic, salt, pepper, and cayenne rub. And they are just really, really delicious, folks. Certainly no need to buy sausages today when we have these pork scraps from the pork split side ribs. Today I'm going to be smoking my ribs with pear wood and my cousin is good at finding free wood around the city. So he brought me some pear wood which I have debarked. And I've cut it up into some chunks. And we're going to uh, soak the chunks. I always like soaking my chunks prior to adding them to the smoker. Pearwood is a delicious, delicious wood. It smells sweet when it's smoking. It's different than apple and cherry. So if you can find some pearwood, it's really, really good. This was my first time using it actually this summer. And here are the side ribs, which I rubbed down with uh, mustard and my special rub, which I use for many different meats. I think really all you need in your pantry is about two or three rubs for all the different meats. I think it's just really silly to me, all of these barbecue channels that talk about buying and making so many different kinds of rubs and sauces. It's not really that important because it's only one component of the flavor. The majority of the flavor comes from the meat itself and then also from, of course, the smoke and the crust that you develop. Here's my new handle. This took me an hour to make. You certainly don't need to spend $50 on making a new big green egg handle. The old one was rotten and I converted it to charcoal and cooked some meat with it the other day. Here are the ribs. They've been on for about four hours. And 
and I usually rub them down with some molasses barbecue sauce or some grape barbecue sauce that I make and let it cook another half hour but here's the finished product and they're really good really really delicious <laughs>